Flooding and broken within Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrow and pray them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Good morning. 
Happy Easter to all of you, the second Sunday of Easter. There are seven Sundays in the season of Easter, and so we are very glad to have you with us today to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. We're going to invite Cassie Hines to bring you up to speed on Vacation Bible School, one of the great things that, uh, that churches do, of course. Welcome, Cassie. Good morning. We might have Elizabeth joining me soon. All right, I tried sneaking away. Uh, I think you might be used to my face now. It is that time of year again to start prepping for our vacation Bible school this summer. So I'm here to start asking for parents to start registering students. And I know, I'm sorry. And for volunteers to sign up. So a couple changes this year we have. um, We're aiming towards... couple changes this year. Uh, Last year we had like three-year-olds, so we're going to put it at four years old to fifth grade, so ending fifth grade. Um, The change for this is just so that the eight kids are a little more age-appropriate. We are hoping to offer nursery, though, so if you have children who are um, three years old or younger, we can still sign them in for our congregants and everything for the nursery, and if you're a volunteer, especially if you're volunteering, so bring those kids along. Even if they're attached to your hip, we can make it work. Um, volunteers, though, if you're able to volunteer the week of, it's still going to be that Monday through Thursday of Ice Cream Day, so June 10th through 13th. And volunteers, we're asking that you come from 8 to noon. All right, we have the QR code on your bulletin and the link to the website. We're hoping to do things digitally this year. If for some reason you can't, that's fine. Come ask me or Beth Larson, and we'll help you get signed up. And I'll help Pastor Chris out with this. So take that home, use that QR code to invite your friends, neighbors, uh, get your kids registered. Um, Some things I need help with in the volunteer area. So even if you can't help the week of, we have a lot of prepping for the days ahead for decorating. So if you want to be on the decoration committee and lead that, there is a curriculum. Like they have all the things you need to do it. Um, we also have a curriculum or a section called assembly. So if you want to help direct some kids so they can prep doing skits for the opening and everything, let me know if you're interested in that. Or you could be the director and I can give you that and I'll do something else. So you let me know. Uh, it'll be on the bulletin for registering and there'll be a board in the back eventually for more information on things to help with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cassie. And uh, if you have grandkids of your own and and you need a a baby fix, Uh, it's an opportune time to do some babysitting during BBS while while their parents kind of run around. So thank you. I invite you to, um, as Cassie said, please do take your flyer home with you. There's lots of other announcements, of course, and please keep everyone in prayer in your prayers throughout the week who are listed there. If you have a prayer concern, please write that person's name or that event on that slip of paper that is in the black welcome folder uh, in your pew rack there. And you can just give those to an usher at any point during the service this morning. And so with that, I invite you to please turn inside the front cover of your red hymnal to the brief order of confession and forgiveness. And rising, please face the cross at the back of the church. We begin now this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so let us confess our sin now in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our first song this morning. Let us pray. 
O Lord God, we lift up our voices, for you are the one who saves, and we shout out, Hallelujah. You are King of kings, you are Lord of lords, and by your light all the world sees and knows your love. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you have sent your Son Jesus, and that he did not shy away from the cross or shirk his duty, but that he has redeemed perfectly and shared your love with all the world. We thank you, O Lord, and praise your name. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and bought, brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is. When kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the, be on the head running down upon the beard. On the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Amen. The second reading is from the book of 1 John, the first chapter. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, to declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses from all sin. If we say that we do not have, or we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he, is so, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, namely Easter Sunday, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. 
After Jesus had said this, He showed them His hands and His side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent Me, so I send you. When the Lord had said this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, I'd like to invite all the kids to come forward this morning. I don't have something to share with you. I have something to show you this morning. So come on forward. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Aaliyah, would you like to be my helper today? I'm going to need a bit of a helper, okay? Come on up, everybody. Good morning. Okay. Now, today's kind of a... Well, today is the second Sunday of Easter, okay? Last Sunday was Easter Sunday. That was number one. And now we're going to celebrate Easter for seven Sundays in a row. And I'm going to pass the Christ candle, the Paschal candle, to Aaliyah here, all right? It's kind of a big candle. It's sort of heavy. It's actually an oil lamp. It's an oil candle. So it's filled with oil in here. Now I want to show you some of the symbols on the Christ candle. The first symbol, can you tell me what this is? Do you know, Emma? Yeah, it's a sheep, right? In fact, it's a young sheep. It's a baby sheep, a lamb. Exactly, exactly. It is a lamb. And this reminds us that Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, everyone in Jesus' day would have recognized this lamb because long before Jesus, when the Jews, when Israel were still in Egypt, you know where the pyramids are, of course, right? They were slaves in Egypt. But God set them free by the blood of, a, of the Lamb. And he did this on the night called Passover. So God first saved his people Israel by the blood of a Lamb. But now he saves everybody the world over, not just Israel, but the people of every nation by Jesus, who is the new Lamb of God. Right? And so we call this a Paschal candle because the word Pascha means lamb or sheep. All right, so that's the first thing. Of course, do you see the cross here? You can see that. Jesus was crucified. He died on the cross. And do you see this green and white flower here? What kind of flower is that? Sun. It's an Easter lily, isn't it? Right? Just like these Easter lilies here. All right? Which reminds us that Jesus is new life. All right? But most of all, I want to show you Okay, what's the point of a candle? What's the point of a candle? What does a candle do? A candle shines, doesn't it? It lights up, right? So here's the fire at the top, right? right? Can you see that? Can you hold it down just a little bit lower so the kids can all see that, all right? So Jesus is not just the Lamb of God, okay? But Jesus is also the light of the world. Exactly, Emma. He is the light of the world. 
and he shines in the darkness, and so he's never extinguished, all right? Now, when Jesus died on the cross, for a little while, it got dark. In fact, it got so dark, it was like an eclipse. And I suppose you know, don't you? Because I guess it's all the talk of the town, right? That there's going to be an eclipse tomorrow. Have you talked about this at school? Yeah. I went, I went to, I to the museum and I hung the lights down. Uh-huh. I watched the eclipse. And you watched the eclipse from up there once. Well, tomorrow there's going to be an eclipse, which is when the sun, right, is blocked out by the moon. The moon moves in front of the sun. And so the light gets very dark. It blocks out the sun's light, right? Well, and I'll talk more about this for the grown-up sermon, okay? But even, even on that day when Jesus died, right, and it got really dark and the light of the sun was blotted out, even on that day, death could not keep the light of Jesus from shining in the world forever, because Jesus was dead on Friday, he stayed in the tomb on Saturday, the second day, and then on the third day, on Easter Sunday, the light of the world, Jesus, came out to shine for all the world again. Hmm? So Jesus is the light of the world, and because he lives now forever, his light shines forever. Okay? So think of that when you watch the eclipse tomorrow. Okay? when you're with your teachers and it gets dark outside, you can remember that Jesus is the light of the world and he always shines brightly in our lives, in our hearts, okay? All right, now, um, I'm sorry for the long introduction. Uh, We are going to do something that is really fun, okay? So, do all of you remember this little light of mine, right? I'm talking to the grown-ups now, of course, right? You don't, you remember this little light of mine? We're going to sing that. Okay, bear with me. Have some fun with me, right? You need, to, you need to act like children this morning, and here's your opportunity. Kids, I'm going to have you help me. We're going to lead the congregation and teach them this little light of mine. Do you know it? It goes like this. I'll sing it real quickly. One verse. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It's actually going to be a little bit syncopated when Mike plays it on the piano. You know that song? Good. Okay, and then the second verse is hide it under a bushel. Get out your light. Hands out of your pockets, right? Hands out of your pockets, right? Get your light up. Come on, grown-ups. You're not too old. Come on, all right? Now get your bushel basket, right? Right? Hide it under a bushel. And then what do you say? No! You need to say it that loud. Come on, Emma. I know you've got a big voice. Logan, where's Logan? There's Logan. Are you ready? Ready? Hide it under a bushel? No! I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. Okay, now the last one, the last one is, won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. And when you go to make the blow it out, won't let Satan move your candle out of the way, right? Won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Okay, Emma, are you ready? Got to have your finger up. Right? Light of the cross, right? Light of Jesus. All right? Let's sing together. Congregation, here we go, all right? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ready? Here's the fun part. Get your bushel basket. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Last verse. Won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine, 
Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good job, everybody. Give yourself a hand. Aaliyah, thank you for holding the light of Christ. And I'm going to let you guys go back to your seats now. We'll consider that song our prayer today. All right. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from the light of the world, the one in whom there is no darkness at all. The Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Well, so um, tomorrow there is, there is an eclipse, as I suppose you, you already know. And it'll be uh, about, I checked this out, about three quarters f- complete here in Lamar's. What time of day is it tomorrow? Mike, do you know offhand? No? Does anybody know offhand? like around noon or one o'clock? Okay, you're going to have to figure out that time precisely because uh, the fullness of the eclipse only lasts apparently three minutes and, and 16 seconds. Huh? Uh, interesting, isn't it? Uh, 316, right? It should remind us of God's love for all the world, John 316. Three minutes and 16 seconds long. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, as I was talking about with the, the children, um, The word that the Gospels use, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the word that the Gospel writers use in describing the darkness is is the same word that we use in English, eclipse, eclipse. Uh, Both in the Greek and in the English, it's the same word. And, of course, it means that when Jesus died, uh, most English translations will read that the sun's light failed or that the sun's light was, was blotted out. And, and the reason for that, the reason why most English translations don't simply say that darkness fell over the land because the sun was eclipsed, is because, in fact, when Jesus died on the cross, it was during the week of Passover. And Passover always happens when there is a full moon. Okay, You've seen a full moon many times, of course. That's because the moon is sort of behind the earth, and then we've got the earth, and then you've got the sun. And so you can see the fullness of the light reflected off the moon because the earth is not in the way. So when Jesus died, that was during the week of Passover. And Passover is always held when there is a full moon, okay? On the other hand, An eclipse can only happen when there's a new moon, right? When the moon is between the sun and the earth, right? So it would be inaccurate. I know, I know. It's like, get done already, Pastor Chris. Really, right? So an eclipse can only happen when the moon is between the sun and the earth, okay? That would not have taken place during Passover because, again, Passover is during a new moon. Excuse me, a full moon. All right, enough of the astronomy lessons here. What's the point? That's very interesting, you say, Pastor Chris. But what should we make of all of that? The point is this, that it's not simply some coincidentally timed astronomical event, but it's rather that when Jesus Christ dies on the cross that the light of the world himself is diminished, or you might even say, for a time, is extinguished, is extinguished. Jesus is the light of the world. And so when he dies, he does just that. He dies. And so it would only stand to reason that those observing that awful event on that terrible day, which we call Good Friday for good reason, right? Because it wins our salvation. It only stands to reason that those watching and observing this darkness would describe it with the word eclipse. I know. Now, we use the word to mean many different things. (laughs) We use the word to mean many different things in English too, right? Oh, I know. So if you think of, um, oh, tell me her name. Caitlin uh, Clark, right? The great basketball player, right? So if you've been watching the basketball games, and I hope you have, they've actually been 
been, 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 been quite competitive. Um, <clears throat> you'll know, of course, that everyone's talking about how Caitlin Clark is uh, it, it, not just the premier basketball player presently, but the best ever. Right? She's, she set all of the NCAA records for scoring, and I think maybe also for assists, uh, maybe not rebounds, I suppose, but scoring and assists, right? And, and she's, she's far exceeded uh, the, the old records, right? In English, if I were to say to you that Caitlin Clark has eclipsed all of these other records, right, you would, you would of course understand that I'm not talking about the, the lights going out in the gymnasium where she's playing, right, but that she has surpassed all of these records, that she has excelled far beyond them, that she stands in first place, that she's the best of the best, right? And this is how we use the word eclipse most often in English. So in the same way that you might use the word eclipse in any number of ways in English, so also in Greek, right? So it's not as though the sun is just getting blocked out by the moon. It's that the light of the world, the light of the universe, Jesus, is, is failing, right? And has failed. But of course, as you know, that's not the end of the story. Jesus rises on the third day. He comes forth and the light shines in the darkness and is not extinguished. So here's where I'll stop today. I'm going to have you open your Bibles to go ahead and take the black Bible. Oh, I know, you never thought I'd put you to work today, but in fact, it's true. But this is really easy to find this passage in the Bible. It is the very last page on page 205 in Revelation chapters 21 and 22. If you look on page 205, again, it's the very last page of the printed text of the Bible. Acolytes, you've got to Play along with us here, okay? All right, very last page of the Bible, page 205 of the New Testament, okay? There, if you look at chapter 21 and you go down to verse 22, you will see that, and I have to read it off your, um, over your shoulder here because I've got it mostly memorized but not entirely. Now, this is St. John and he's writing about his experience of looking at heaven. And St. John in verse 22 of chapter 21 writes, I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. Also drop down to verse 5 of chapter 22. Look at verse 5 just below it. And this is where St. John writes, And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or of sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Friends, the good news is this. The light of Jesus Christ is not extinguished on any day, regardless of whether there is an eclipse or not. And that's good news because there's lots of days in our lives that are cloudy and gloomy. There's lots of times in our lives where our hearts are dark. But the promise to you is the same promise to Thomas, to the disciples, to the church, and to the world, that Jesus is the light the one who shines, in whom there is no darkness, and the darkness does not overcome him. That's important. That's essential for you to remember on your most difficult of days. The Lord Jesus lives. His light shines. His light shines on you. Peace be with you, sisters and brothers in Christ, and God's blessings today. Now, let's rise up as together we join our voices singing the confession of our faith. Oh, 
our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of with you. Let us pray. O Lord, it is by your Son's name that we are saved. It is by his name that we are washed clean from our sin. And it is by his holy name that we are given the promise of life everlasting. O Lord, pour out your mercy upon us that the light of your Son may shine in our lives and that all people in our lives may see your love and come to know your mercy in their own souls and hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, let your love extend through our hands and by our labors be shown to all people. But especially, Lord, we ask that you would stretch out and touch all of those who need any encouragement, any healing, any consolation, and any blessing. We pray this morning for Diane and Deanna, Crystal, Jeffrey, Bill, Grace, and Nancy. O Lord, pour out your love upon Sherry and Chris, Ron, Steve, and Matt, and stay close to the side of Tyler, Brian, Daryl, and Donnie, and all of those whom we name before you now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, to your children we ask, we implore you, remember all your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, especially in places that are torn asunder by war. We pray for all the people of Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, for Russia and Africa, and for any place that lives under the threat of violence. Lord, we ask that you would surround with your holy angels the innocent, that you would shelter them, that you would strengthen those who work on behalf of justice, and that you would put a new and a right spirit upon any who are inclined to violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the rain that you let down upon the earth, that it would water the land, and that the earth would bring forth a bountiful harvest in the autumn. 
Lord, watch over all of those who till the soil and work the ground. Give them safety and strength that they may be good stewards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands now, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, 
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set and all is prepared and our Lord says, come and dine. And so regardless of whatever congregation you might ordinarily attend, all the baptized are welcome to the table. Please be seated, coming forward in two lines at the direction of your ushers. of 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty Father, that you have refreshed us through the, through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray in your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our sending song this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.